Hey folks, let's check out the solutions. Question 2 says, in the accompanying diagram we got two parallel lines A, B and C, D cut by a transversal E, F at P and Q. So basically it's saying we got this parallel line and this one and it's sliced up by this transversal and we got to find out which of the following four statements are true. So here's how I approach the question. So what I did is I first looked at the two angles, right? The first angle is this one. Uh, APE so that's APE so that's gonna be this angle and my second angle I'm gonna use I don't know blue and my second angle was CQF so that was that was this one CQF that was this angle now the question is how can you like how in the world do you know the relationship between those two angles right so here's how you know you gotta first ask yourself, are these two angles interior or exterior? Are they interior angles or exterior angles? That's the first question you ask yourself. Now, how do you know if it's interior? It's interior if it lies within the two parallel lines. So this is interior. In fact, I'm gonna use a different color here. So here's yellow, and that means interior. You're inside the two parallel lines. On the other hand, if you're not inside the two parallel lines, if you're in this orange area outside the two parallel lines, well then you're in the exterior. So you can see both of our uh, angles lie in the exterior. So these are exterior angles. Okay, that's great. Why is that helpful? Well, that's helpful because now you can classify these angles. They're exterior angles and both of them are on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the left side. On the other hand, if for example this angle was on the other side of the transversal like this, then they would be alternate exterior angles. But that's not the case. They're same side exterior angles. So we should write that down just so we know that. They are same side exterior angles. And of course same side exterior angles add up to 180 degrees. And this is the choice that matches that. They add up to 180 degrees. All right, next question says we got two parallel lines, A, B, and C, D, cut by this transversal E, F, and we want to find out what the measure of angle B, E, F was. Okay, what's the measure of angle B, E, F? So first of all, B, E, F is this angle right here. I want to find the measure of this angle. So how can I do that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is, again, classify these, these two angles. What are they? Well, they're in the inside of the parallel lines, so there's some kind of interior angles, but they're also on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the right side of the transversal, right? So these are same side interior angles. And of course, same side interior angles, again, they add up to 180 degrees. So I can do that. I can take this, take this, add them up, and set the other side equal to 180. Okay, so now I can just solve for x. 5x plus 80 equals 180. So 5x equals 100 and x is 20. Okay, so great. So I have everything I need. I got x is 20. Am I done? No, because look, BEF is actually 2x plus 60. So I got to plug that back in. So BEF angle angle BEF, the measure of angle BEF is 2x plus 60, so I gotta plug uh, x equals 20 back in here. So 2 times 20 plus 60 is equal to 40 plus 60, and that's equal to 100. And that's answer choice one. So our final answer for question three is one. Okay, moving on to the next one. Question four, we wanna find the measure of angle one in terms of x. Okay, so here's what we know. We know, first of all, that we have two, uh, two rays, right? Two rays, one is AD, one is BC, they're parallel to each other. And we also have an angle, okay? Here's where all of the action is happening. This angle. This angle is bisected by a ray, by this ray. Bisected means it's cut in half. So that means this part of the angle is congruent to this part of the angle. So we know that angle ABC is X degrees. 
So that means this angle right here in orange, that's going to be x. We also know that this angle is 1, and we want to express 1 in terms of x. So here's how. Here's how we can do it. First realize that because this, is, this angle is 1, this angle is vertical to that. So it also has to be 1. Okay? And recognize that we have some uh, something really nice here. We have an F looking shape. That means you probably have some corresponding angles and actually you do. Okay? Notice that this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles. So this angle is also going to be equal to 1. And since this is bisected and these two angles are congruent, this is also equal to 1. And so what you end up with is a triangle that looks kind of wacky, but it, it it's pretty good. So here's your triangle at the end of the day. So let me shave off the tops. Your triangle has one angle as 1, another angle as 1, and the top angle as x. So I can say that x plus the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 1 adds up to 180. So 2 times the measure of angle 1 is equal to 180 minus x. So now I can just solve for the measure of angle 1. And that's going to be 180 over 2 minus x over 2. And that's of course 90 minus x over 2. And that's choice 1. Wow, that's a nice question. Next one up. In the accompanying diagram, L1 is parallel to L2. So this is parallel to this. And L3 is parallel to L4. So these two are parallel. Then X is not always congruent to which of the following. So here's how I approach this. Take a look and you'll see something interesting. This is the angle we're after, right? Angle X. And we want to know which is not congruent to angle X. Notice that angle B is a corresponding angle to angle X, right? Because if you think of these as parallel lines and you got this transversal, well, you got two corresponding angles. So because angle X and angle B are corresponding angles, they are congruent, and so angle B is not the right answer. Also look at how C, look at how this angle C is a vertical angle to angle B. So notice that angle B is congruent to angle C, and angle X is congruent to angle B. And so that means angle X is also congruent to angle C. And so C is also wrong. It's also congruent, so it's also wrong. Finally, notice how A is an alternate interior angle to um, boom. Is an alternate interior angle uh, to X, right? So these two guys are going to be congruent. You might think, hey, why, what do you mean they're alternate angles? Well, just check it out. If you look at these two parallel lines, you'll see that angle X and angle A are both interior to those two parallel lines. They're in the inside and they're also on different sides of the transversal of this transversal. So they're alternate interior angles and hence they're congruent. So this one's out of favor because these two guys are alternate interior angles uh, so they're congruent. So we're just left with choice D and we're done. Let's take a look at question number six. Question number six, we're asked to find the measure of angle DHE, which is this angle. Now, notice that this angle, DHE, is vertical to this angle, right? So, if I find what this angle is, I can find what DHE is. Uh, so, let's do that. First, I have to notice that this angle, BGE, and this angle, FHC, they are alternate exterior angles. So let's write that down. Alternate exterior angles. And so that means that they're congruent. Remember, alternate congruent, same side, add up to 180. So I can add, I can uh, set them equal to each other. Let me go ahead and get somewhere there's space. So I'm going to move on myself to this side, pack in my bags. So 2x plus 40 is equal to 3x minus 10. So x is equal to 50 degrees. And so are we done? Not even close. We gotta find what this angle is. And this angle is congruent to this one. So we just gotta find out what 3x minus 10 is. 
So 3x minus 10 is just 140 degrees. And that's the answer for the measure of angle DHE. All right, we're on a roll. Check out question number seven. We gotta find out the measure of angle BEF, which is this angle right here. Now notice that angle that I just shaded in, that's congruent to this angle. So all I have to do is find this one. And notice also that this angle, 4x minus 15, and this angle, 2x plus 7, are corresponding angles. So they're congruent. So I can go ahead and set them equal. Okay, and I can go ahead and solve for x. So x is going to be equal to 11. And so I can go ahead and plug this value of x back in here. Let's see what I get. So I'm going to get, oops, whoopsie daisies. So I'm going to get 4 times 11 minus 15. That's going to give me 44 minus 15. That's, of course, 29 degrees. And so that's going to be the measure of angle B E F. All right, question eight. We got uh, WX is parallel to YZ, and we know that angle CEW is 50 degrees, as well as angle BEX. We gotta find the measure of angle EGF. So what's that angle? So if you notice, you've got some very nice things going on here, and you've got corresponding angles. So here's my two parallel lines, here's my transversal, and now I'm going to shade in my corresponding angles. This is my corresponding angle. This is my corresponding angle. And so this angle also has to be 50 degrees. So that's the answer to number eight. Okay, number nine says I've got some wacky stuff, right? I've got uh, a ray FG that bisects this angle. So this is congruent to this. And I also know a couple of other things. I know that angle EFG which is which one angle EFG is this angle so that's going to be equal to X so I'm going to say that's X but this also has to be X since they're congruent we also know that this angle FEG has to be 4X so let's write 4X and finally the measure of angle EGF EGF has to be what EGF is this one and we don't know what that is. We got to find out what it is. But check it out. Check it out. This angle and this angle are alternate interior. That means they're congruent. That means this one is also X. And so check it out. I've got a triangle right here. I've got a triangle. And a triangle, you know what they say about triangles, they add up to 180. So 4X, which is this angle, plus X, which is this angle, plus x, which is this angle, adds up to 180. So 6x equal to 180, and x is equal to 30 degrees. And that's it. That's the measure of angle EGF. That's the measure of angle EGF. 30 degrees Celsius. Just kidding. All right, moving on. So for the last couple of questions, we got these two parallel lines. And we know that P and M are perpendicular because of this uh, right angle sign. We want to prove M is also perpendicular to Q. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, notice, whoops, notice that this angle here is corresponding to this angle. This angle is, of course, 90 degrees. So this angle, which is corresponding, has to be congruent. It's also 90 degrees. Since this is 90 degrees here, that means that it's perpendicular. It's a right angle. And so Q is also perpendicular to M. And that's it. Finally, our last question for the day. Uh, we have DE. Let me use a different color. In a festive mood, we have DE, which is this one, bisects ABC. So ABC is this wacky angle right there. So remember, bisect means uh, two angles are cut in half. Uh, the angle is cut in half. So this part is equal to this part. So we got to prove that these two angles, 3 and 4, are congruent. So how are we going to do that? So here's one idea. Check it out and you'll notice that we got some big giant F's going around. That means there's some corresponding angles hiding in here. So in fact, if I draw, if I extend these parallel lines here, 
you'll notice that I've got a transversal sharing right in the face. So here's my transversal and check it out. That means this angle, angle two, and this angle, angle four, are corresponding angles. So this one is congruent to angle two. And in the same way, you can see that angle three and angle one are alternate interior angles. So they're congruent. And so angle one and angle two are congruent because you know the angle was bisected. And angle three is congruent to angle one. And angle four is congruent to angle two. So that means angle three and four must be congruent to each other. And therefore, we complete our proof. Thanks for watching. We'll check you out.